Let's move on to lithium. Lithium is the classic mood stabilizer, even though there's no such thing as a mood stabilizer. But it's proven effective for acute manic episodes. Go figure. I mean, wh why would that work? Oh, my goodness. But it does. And it keeps you from having another manic episode. You know, those of you who are younger may not use this as much. Uh, before, there was a real appreciation of the role of the drugs that block dopamine in the treatment of mania. A lot more lithium was used in hospitals. And we also do lithium loading to actually get the dose up quicker. And we tended to use really high levels of, of lithium. And we're monitoring it in you know, having levels around 1.0. Because we often used it by itself, and it worked. Um, obviously, the higher the dose, the more the side effects. And in the old days, sometimes people, you know, use lithium as a monotherapy for the at least the manic part of things. It was pretty good. Um, today, it tends to be used in combination with other things, and possibly with a little bit of the dose reduced, and possibly giving the drug once a day at night to reduce some of the load on the kidney and also the uh, daytime uh, side effects. But however you use the lithium alone or with others, high dose or medium doses, it is definitely a, 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 you know, a effective. Well, why would you give lithium versus a, a, a drug with blocked dopamine? Or in a little bit, we'll talk about valproic acid or some of the anticonvulsants. Why would you give one versus the other? Well, there's no way to say, well, your symptoms predict you will respond to D2 antagonism, and your symptoms predict that you will respond to lithium. But there is some kind of overall, I mean, lithium has tended to be used in people with more euthymic kind of mania, high and mighty, wonderful feelings. And some of the other drugs, particularly maybe even Depakote, uh, Valproex, and uh, atypical antipsychotics, so-called dopamine antagonists, for dysphoric mania and rapid cycling mania and more chaotic mania. Now that, you know, is just kind of like anecdotes. But those are some reasons for doing that. It's well established, though, to prevent suicide. So if you've got a bipolar patient with suicidal ideation, probably a good idea to really seriously consider using some lithium. And you might say, well, any drug that, that helps depression will eventually prevent suicide. Possibly so. But you know what? This is the only one that's proven. Clozapine has been proven to reduce suicide in patients with schizophrenia. But in bipolar disorder, this is the only drug that's been proven to prevent suicide. Now, that's good news, but it's also bad news. Guess what? Don't stop lithium without thinking about this if the patient's on it. And don't stop it precipitously because what goes down could come back up. So if you prevent suicide on lithium and you stop it for some reason, or the patient stops it, you could have reemergence of this. So be careful about that aspect, but it's one of the great aspects of lithium to consider. It's often used off-label to treat bipolar depression because it doesn't work perhaps as robustly as some of the so-called uh, D2 antagonists, D3 antagonists, lorazidone 5-HD7 antagonists that I've been talking about. Um, but um, we can use it to boost people that don't respond to the drugs I've already talked about fully, to just give another kick to help the bipolar depression even more. Even though it's, it's probably better studied and better understood as an anti-manic drug, it can also help depression. How, however, the side effects are a problem in many cases. You can get GI symptoms and weight gain as a kiss of death. You can have some alopecia, hair loss, acne, Tremor is very uh, use, a very common thing, and, and it, it tends to go away with some form of tolerance over time or dose reduction. That's one you can possibly treat with a beta blocker because it sort of looks like a thyroid or a, a you know kind of a hyperadrenergic tremor. It can cause sedation, it can blunt your cognition, and at high doses make you uncoordinated. So people can hate this set of side effects. So one of the ways around that is to use it in augmentation as a helper in lower doses, maybe with levels that are at least 0.4 or so. Now, this hasn't been as well studied. The, probably the best studies of lithium are as monotherapies for mania. But those of us who want to use lithium for its anti-suicide and boosting effects 
uh, for the so-called uh, dopamine agents that work for bipolar depression can add this. It requires monitoring, um, but, you know, renal function should be monitored over time and thyroid as well. It can have a narrow therapeutic index, particularly at the top end of the range. If you're using this as a monotherapy to treat acute mania, it does have a narrow therapeutic index, but that's not usually how we use it these days. How does it work? I suppose the answer is G-O-K. God only knows. We have speculations that it works essentially on signal transduction cascades. Shown here are three sets of those signal transduction cascades. There are some that come from the neurotrophic factors like BDNF talking to Turk B receptors. And you see there GSK3 is a phosphorylating enzyme. It turns out lithium will inhibit that. And if you inhibit phosphorylation, you can change signal transduction in which phosphorylation by this enzyme is occurring. You can also change G-protein-linked stimulation because lithium can have effects on the transduction of G-protein signals and even downstream. And it can change the downstream transduction from ion channels on the far right. These are possibilities more than proofs. If you really want to say how lithium works, we don't know.